Can I make a comment before you make a comment? Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to make a comment. Well, okay. I'm okay. not sure what I'm making. Well, while you're thinking about what the hell you're doing, um, I, I just wanted to uh, indicate that I'm enjoying the comfort of Olivia Shingledecker's chair, which we're storing for, <laughs> for the summer. Yeah. So uh, this, uh, uh, I, I believe you put it this way before we started. Uh, this this podcast is brought to you by Shingledecker chairs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Comfort and class at comfort, the same time. Comfort of the home in the garage. <laughs> For Radio Free Atchison podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think I think mine is a comment uh, uh, about some some people and that 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 people was actually singular. So one person commented um, t- t- or m- made a comment to me that it would be helpful if the um the, the these podcast discussions were on a an actual podcast ishy thing so that it would be easier to listen to on on, 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 on like an mp3 player or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that so um i'm in the process of getting it on some sort of Something or other that does something that puts it eventually on um, on your little player I, on your little like little MP3 player, but whatever that would be, probably an iPhone for most people. Um, but it's it's uh, going to be, I believe, on iTunes podcast or whatever they call it, and really? Spotify. Whoa! But but I mean, there's like there's like a million and a half podcasts on there. So, so as long as you have like half a brain, you can like. Get your own podcast on Spotify. But the greatest thing is you could like put a playlist of our podcasts with on Spotify with like, you know, the Beastie Boys and I know. Sabotage. I know. After <laughs> listening to this, you could start listening to uh, Grass Monkey. <laughs> and who doesn't want to do that? I know. In fact, maybe we should we should have started this yeah. off with Grass Monkey. <laughs> it's hard to start with that sort of stuff at five five fifteen. Five fifteen in the morning. <laughs> you have to start a little more solemn. <laughs> So we're we're uh, we're just going to be doing in, in this discussion just going to be doing chapter five chapter five of book one because next time we have two special guests uh, stay tuned for for, for book that. two special guests yes yeah so and, but, and and you know I was going to mention this I don't know I didn't talk to you about this before mentioning this but I figured you'd be okay with it mm. um, you know there's 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 a lot of people in this sign up genius that are interested in this podcast, and perhaps people will be around in town. Uh, maybe we could extend an invitation. Yeah, to come come join yeah, us if, if you're around. If people are and, in town and and uh, willing to come at be a guest speaker five fifteen in the morning. Yeah, uh, you'd be you'd be welcome to to join us on it's two and a half car garage plenty of room oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah there's there's a table saw that's not cramped at all <laughs> we only have one shingle decker chair but we do have other chairs yeah. <laughs> okay so right. we'll uh, we'll jump into the elders but that's a that's a great idea i think that's that's, that's really helpful yeah i think it'd be fun um so whenever you're in town Feel free to swing on by if if you've if you've read and caught up and want to join the conversation. Contact us first because you might show up at five fifteen and we might be asleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <definitely. laughs> don't do that. Yeah. If you do show up though, you could you could clean out my garage. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, is that a shingle decker chair? <laughs> no. Oh, there's another. There's another. No, there's only one shingle decker chair. Okay, so. Let's jump into chapter five. All right, let's talk about elders. The elders. Uh, interesting. So this seems to be like spiritual direction on crack or something like that. Right? Yeah. The elders. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good crack. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crack. Holy crack. <laughs> so, 
So, um, but it's interesting. I, I just to 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 set the um, kind of the context. Alyosha, you you get he's nineteen. Yeah. Right. So he's nineteen years old, which is important to keep in mind, and that means Ivan is probably. Did, did they say 24. how many? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Twenty-four, and Dimitri's twenty-seven. He did right. say that all like right at the beginning. Right. So, so, so th- if you think about Alyosha, he's he's younger than all of you. Right. That's that's important to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, Ivan is probably close to some of your your ages. Um, right. So um, the. Um, the description, however, of of Alyosha before you get to the elders, I think, is interesting. So, I before jumping into what an elder is, which is the subject of most of this chapter, twenty mm-hmm. page twenty seven onwards, um, you get a dis- description of Alyosha and kind of why he was led into the, the monastery. Um, and I, I find this really puzzling. I'm, I, I, I've, I've either read or listened to this book, book five, I think four or five times in the last month, probably mm-hmm. like once a week for the last month or so. And, and I'm really, pu- and part of it is because I'm really puzzled by what's going on on page 25, which is really the very beginning of chapter five. Yeah. Uh, so I want to just read a little bit and get your thoughts. On, on what you think is going on here because I'm I had one idea now I have a different idea and I'm not sure and they're somewhat opposed to each other hmm. so I don't exactly know what to think um, okay so here very top of page 25 um, but but I fancy that Alyosha was more of a realist than anyone oh no doubt in the monastery he fully believed in miracles But to my thinking, miracles are never a stumbling block to the realist. It is not miracles that dispose realists to belief. The genuine realist, if he is an unbeliever, will always find strength and ability to disbelieve in the miraculous. And if he is uh, confronted with a miracle as an irrefutable fact, he would rather disbelieve his own senses than admit the fact. So he's talking about the realist who's an, an atheist. Mm-hmm. When, when they confront the, um, the miraculous, they're always going to be able to come up with like an error theory. Uh, either why what they, um, uh, what they didn't um, think fits their worldview or what they don't think should fit their worldview. They'll come up with a story about why it was either a false perception or why um, it was actually says in the next sentence, uh, if he admits it, he admits it as a fact of nature till and un, till then unrecognized by him. So you mm-hmm. might think, well, this is so miraculous. This this individual got healed, and it turns out, no, no, no. That's just we didn't really quite understand how um, air works. Air and <laughs> the kidney works, and when you mix it with like Russian vodka, this thing <laughs> happens, and people get healed. It's amazing. We just, but it's just really, it's no, it's just chemistry that's going on. There's nothing miraculous. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or I, I pre- presumably have in mind, or he has in mind, um, like psychology stuff. Like, wh- why do people mm-hmm. think certain ways? And, and a lot of times, people might say, "Oh, it's not really that miraculous. Why this person?" forgave this individual why this person decided to do x y or z it's and then you come up with with some sort of you know new account of human psychology that that makes those decisions not really that interesting um they're really just consequences of and you we have a new psychological theory that kind of explains Mm -hmm. humanity so that Mm -hmm. what seems to be these these radical acts of um love and charity that seem to only be possible in light of grace turn out to actually uh, just be consequences of the external conditions of under a new you know mode of psychology mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but then he goes on to say um but for for um alyosha um uh, faith uh let's see next next 
next sentence. Faith mm -hmm. is not in the realist spring from the miracle, but the miracle from faith. If the realist once believes, then he is bound by his very realism to admit the miraculous also. <laughs> and it goes on. The Apostle Thomas said that he would not believe till he saw, but when he did see, he said, my Lord and my God. Was it the miracle... Uh, was it the miracle uh, forced him to believe? Most likely not. But he believed solely because he desired to believe. And precise, and possibly he fully believed in his secret heart, even when he said, I do not believe till I see. Uh, so I'm, I'm somewhat confused by what's going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I have a few, but I, 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 I mean, even if it's, I'm confused too. That's yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> I, I really highlighted this section, and I, and I, I, I agree with your your first take on this. Is I'm not sure what's going on exactly, but it, what what it seems to be saying is that for the one, it almost seems like. Faith does not come from the miraculous. I mean, he does say that. Yeah. <laughs> he does, does, not, does not spring from the miracle, but the miracle from faith. Not, and, and that could be taken in a way where you, 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 you say you see miracles everywhere, but it's just all hogwash because you know everything's right. a miracle to you, which, which is in some sense tr true for just beauty's sake. I right. But yeah. um, I, I think what, what he's saying is that the miracle makes sense in the worldview of faith because – Faith, which admits divinity or whatever you want to say, um, is is obviously not going to bracket the miraculous from a w worldview that has God. And yet, I, I I think he's he seems to be saying, and and this kind of goes back to that one line that that you were pointing out to me, um, page eight. As a general rule, people, even the wicked, are much more naive and simple-hearted than we suppose, and we ourselves too. I, I wonder if his his bringing up the Apostle Thomas in his in his secret heart, he he did believe, even when he said he didn't believe. Um, that, and and this goes deep into um, some of the stuff that's going to come up in book two mm -hmm. um, about lying to yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I think this this idea of being true to yourself, maybe that's what realism is. The one who's true to himself, who does have faith, is going to say, "Of course, miracles. That, that's why, why wouldn't there be, right? Yeah, or something so, like that." So, so this is what. I, so I was puzzled by. Um, it seems in this paragraph that you have realism, which is compatible the way it's described here. So I, I'm wondering, like, what Dostoevsky means by realism. I guess yeah. that's the, that's, and it it seems to be contrasted with at the top mysticism. Um, I shall be told, this top of 25, I shall be told perhaps that red cheeks are not incompatible with fanaticism and mysticism. But I fancy that Alyosha w was more of a realist. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, so I was thinking, what, what the heck does he mean by realism? And then um, it looks like it's, it's possible on his description of realism to either be an atheist or a... Uh, mm -hmm. Or a theist, mm -hmm. right? So you can be a realist and an atheist, or a realist and a theist, and um, it's almost like a preconception as you approach the world. Yeah, and so the, exactly, and so the way I was or like a precondition, maybe. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's a mode. It's a how you approach things. Yeah, and and so m one thought that I that I had this is I, this is actually the second thought is that the realist is one who kind of takes miracles to be um, consequences of a theory. So such that like they fit with what they expect the world to be, which is quite ironic because it turns out to be, that's almost precisely not to put the real primary, but to put a theory or some way. Yeah, to, I was kind of thinking that too. I was kind of thinking it almost seems like the worldview becomes the judge of reality 
right. rather than the other way around. Yes, and specifically the, that, that line, faith does not in the realist spring from the miracle, but the miracle from faith. Mm -hmm. Which, the way I interpreted that is, um, uh, so the miracle you could take to be an event that is just something you experience that you find to be beyond comprehension and um, sort of beyond natural doing, or I don't know how you want to put it. And, and what, what this is saying is that is not the, the, the primary thing giving rise to belief. Rather, it's belief that would say, okay, now I'm allowed to, and even look, and allowed to look for um, miracles, mm -hmm. which would make, um, I think it would make um, faith a type of ideology. It's a type of, mm -hmm. of um, kind of, I want the world to be this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and so now I can see the world this way. Uh, so that so the miracles actually aren't causes. Yeah, yeah. They're merely effects of a cause, which is depending on how you're going to see faith here. Is is the cause sort of this out completely outside of one's experience, shot in the dark, lightning bolt, or is it a decision? of a worldview that you make prior to engaging with the world. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's, it's kind of, it's, so it boils down to the question, what is it, what is the faith? Is it something that you can, um, sort of, you find in the world that is defined in reality? Or is it something that you have to have before you come to reality and then you you make you sort of impose it onto reality mm -hmm. and and you know you, you make you make the world Christian by draping by being Christian. Yeah, by draping <laughs> the faith over it. Or yeah. is it that you look in the world and you find in it you know the the, 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 the marks, the contours of Christianity, right? And, and so I think it's this it, is going to come up again yeah. later. Uh, but it's I think it's the question of whether or not faith is Christianity is an ideology or not. Um, and I, and and the reason I so the reason I was thinking about this is that it ties up with stuff that comes up later about why Alyosha respects Zosima so much. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons he, he and we can talk about what an elder is. Because Zosima is the, one of the last elders, or it is the last elder in their monastery. But it, it's, I think it's because he thinks that, that is, Alyosha thinks that Zosima is this one individual who's capable of realizing this dream that Christianity is, is, um, describing or is telling mm -hmm. and Zosima is the one that's going to kind of be capable of realizing that mm -hmm. and I think that that view of Christianity and I think this is maybe what Dostoevsky is doing is it it becomes very 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 similar to um, socialism or to to communism it becomes mm -hmm. very similar to this we have this dream for the world and we're looking for something that's going to be capable of bringing that dream to reality. Uh -huh. And it turns out for the atheist, it's politics. For the Christian, it's this other thing. And that other thing's called humility and love. But it's still at the service of bringing to, 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 to reality the, um, the, the dream of a kingdom, as he puts it on 30. The true kingdom of Christ will come. Right, the, the true kingdom where there's no um, there's no wars. Everyone's everyone's loving everyone. Uh, that's going to come, but it looks like you have you have. Um, I don't know. I, I, so I, I'm I'm wondering if if he, this is all kind of about as he as you were saying before we. So 
third recording about the the atheistic question. Mm -hmm. Um, the question page of atheism. 26 at the top. For socialism is not merely the labor question, it is before all, all things the atheistic question. The question of the form taken by atheism today, the question of the Tower of Babel built without God, not to mount to heaven from earth, but to set up heaven on earth. And that I think that last point is yeah. what you're getting at. Yeah, and, and uh, then Alyosha also says, um, let's see, where is this? Um, um, I believe it's maybe bottom of 25. Um, the path Alyosha, <coughs> Alyosha chose uh, was a path going in the opposite direction, but he chose it with the same thirst and swift achievement. Uh, as soon as he reflected seriously, he was convinced of the existence of God and immortality. And at once he instinctively said to himself, I want to live for immortality and I will accept no compromise. Um, and it, there, I mean, there are a few other, few other places in here I, I got the impression that um, he didn't quite, um, he didn't, qu I don't know, it, the, 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 the reasons for why he was attracted to the monastery seemed to be more, as, as you would say, maybe political mm -hmm. um, in that he, he had this idea of what would be like proper way to to live and the proper way to to um to be and it was i mean there's nothing wrong with with that but it but it looked like he was placing his conceptions of things prior to mm -hmm. going back to that idea pri yeah prior to to approaching reality so um, so so going back to the realist passage on 25 I was thinking this as, as you were talking, what you just said kind of brought it back up again. It seems that the question that, that ultimately we have, Alyosha is the hero, right? Mm -hmm. and, so, and so there's this idea that he's in some sense going to be right or at least moving towards the right, the, right. the truth. And he, and he talks about his seeking of truth on the bottom of that page, actually, mm -hmm. um, which, which is actually a really good description of what it means to seek truth. Um, but... There's a question here about when he says that Alyosha was more of a realist than anyone. When you, when I first read that, I thought, oh, great. Well, that's good. Being yeah. a realist is really important. But now as we're talking about it, I'm wondering if, if, if Dostoevsky is not saying this kind of faith based in what he's describing as realism is actually not to be commended in the end. Right. Right. And so maybe this is the point of Alyosha, the hero, being the one who moves from – some yeah. some young um, naive yeah, understanding like sort of starry eyed dreamer that that you know yeah. has this like you know maybe he read a I mean you know a couple religious magazines and then said like here's <laughs> here's like the the ideal this right. is the dream and, and yeah um, yeah and this so, is I know what Christianity is I know what it's about let's just try to let's bring it about. Yeah, let's let's let, let's let the rubber hit the road and yeah. let's get this going. Yeah, yeah, and and so I, 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 as you talk about it more, um, it seems then that there's there's something naive and young about his understanding that that maybe is more based in what's going on in the world around him and he doesn't even recognize it. Right. This is why the the next sentence on page twenty six that you didn't read, in the same way he had decided that God and immortality did not exist. He would at once have become an atheist and a socialist. Yeah. So it's almost like because it would serve the same end. Yeah. It's just not as not as effective of a of it, a. Yeah, and ultimately means. it doesn't match his preconceived worldview that God and immortality do exist. Right. Therefore, I have to be a Christian, so, which is just a, a socialist with God. Yeah. Because right. <laughs> it seems like what he wants is the to, the kingdom of heaven set up on earth. Uh huh. And. It turns out he's come to see that Christianity will bring that about. And if he didn't believe in Christianity, if he didn't believe in God, then he would turn to politics. He would turn to right. – and, and I think that reveals that what what's really being aspired to is that end, and Christianity seems to be a means mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Christianity and, is a means to brotherly love. Yeah. And, and so and, and this is a question that I think maybe 
lots of people don't think about, I didn't think about for years and years and years, where you think about, well, someone who puts on a habit has got to got has it all together. And I think the answer to that is no. Yeah. Uh, lots of people put on habits for all sorts of so, bad reasons. We're, right? we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be able to talk about this in greater detail uh, next podcast. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and and I'm not I'm not implicating any of those possible guests that will be. Here. I'll implicate one of them. <laughs> and I'm sure that he would fight right back. Um, <laughs> but I think, but that's what I think is is interesting, right? We we sort of assume that that. And, and, and I think this would be the first thing, and we'll find out next podcast. First thing that, uh, that that a monk would say is, I didn't put on the habit because I had it all figured out. I put on the habit because I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. The habit's a sign that I, I, don't, I don't have things figured out. Yeah, and then I'm a dirty sinner. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's what true like monasticism is. Right? Yeah. It's an entrance into a life in order to become something that one is not. Which, which brings us to um, what an elder is. Yeah, yeah. That's so, a good, a perfect so transition. He talks about... And at the bottom of 26 and into 27, he starts talking about what an elder is, and he kind of talks about the history of it and how it's this sort of controversial thing, and there's a question of whether it's ancient or not. Right. Um, as I was reading this stuff, I, I was also thinking about the question of, you know, uh, if you know anything about the East-West fights historically that have happened, the question of Andrew's, uh, Andrew's uh, mission and death and uh, burial and where that took place and whether or not that was Constantinople or not and whether or not that's an ancient yeah. tradition or it was made up yeah. sometime yeah. when there was starting to be a it's... fight about Rome and Peter and now yeah. we have Andrew and Andrew was first actually and yeah. and like that it, it, this whole it's thing just... like what is what is what what is the ground what the ground and foundation of the elder tradition is it ancient or not completely reminds me of oh, this yeah. question of yeah. was Andrew in Constantinople and dying in Constantinople or not because as in the history of the church. As, as Rome's claims started to get stronger, it was based in Peter, Peter and Paul, yeah, ultimately. Paul. And um, because because the question was, I'm getting into a lot of history. Here. <laughs> the question was like, are we the most important uh, see in, in Christianity because the emperor's here? Because the emperor moved. <laughs> yeah. And so now what? And now Constantinople, Constantinople seems like the most important. But Rome said, no, it was never that. It was always Peter. Peter died here, and Peter and, and built the church on the rock of Peter's bones. Right. And then they were like, well, well, we have Andrew. And the yeah. question is, do they have Andrew? And, and, yeah. and uh, huh. it, it's, it's a really interesting question, which, which is still unresolved today. And yet Paul VI in the 20th century, middle of the 20th century, gave the head of Andrew back to Constantinople. Oh. Back, back. I put that yeah. in quotes because I don't know if that's true or not. Right? Right. Is it back or not? But it was a sign of, of, of brotherly recognition and saying, in some sense, yeah. you are Andrew. Yeah. Right. Interesting. But anyway, that's completely that's... all off, off the wall here. But so so um, here's so this it's 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 coming out much clearer now. I, I think I'm I think I'm sort of getting the harmony of this chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so, you want to read what an elder is and and um, where is that twenty six twenty seven. Um, 27. Okay. What was such an elder? An elder was one who took your soul, your will, into his soul and his will. Already there's like this abiding with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When you choose an elder, you renounce your own will and yield it to him in complete submission, complete self-abnegation. -ab this novitiate, this terrible school of abnegation, is undertaken voluntarily in the hope of self-conquest, of self-mastery. In order, after a life of obedience, to attain perfect freedom, that is, from self, to escape the lot of those who have lived their whole life without finding their true selves in themselves. That's a great line. Yeah. Uh, the next sentence. This institution of elders is not founded on theory, but was established in the East from the practice of thousands of years. It's, it's, yeah, go ahead. I mean, tying up with what we were talking about earlier, uh, the, the institution of elders... That is this this institution set up precisely to um, attain perfect freedom through a life of obedience, a loss of self to find oneself. Yeah, uh, is not a result of a theory, right? It it did it did not come about mm -hmm. as a result of an idea of uh -huh. what perfect Christianity would be. Mm -hmm. It came about as a result of thousands of years of of practice of of people. Um, you know, probably pulling their hair out, trying to like 
ha having this desire because of a situation that they've been in and they slowly over i mean it, it didn't start as an institution like none of none of no no just genuine institution begins as a like a, a um, an institution or, or maybe maybe that's maybe a little too strong maybe there's a few but most fruitful institutions start organically which is to say you know you don't you don't just out of the blue drop a complete picture of right. social order it, it happens organically and I think what you get here is um, that's that's what the elder tradition is which I yeah. think is the 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 paradigm of at, at least the way it seems to be described here maybe throughout the whole book the paradigm of the the, the, the Christian tradition the Christian life yeah exactly well you know on that line going back to 25. Let's talk. Let, can I read this truth yeah. section? Because I think this fits into it, right? So it's oh. not. It's not like I have the truth. Here it is. Let's start living it. Rather, um, this is this is bottom of twenty five. Add to that that he was to some extent a youth of our last epoch. This is Alyosha. Mm -hmm. That is honest in nature, desiring truth, seeking for it, believing it, and seeking to serve it at once with all the strength of his soul, seeking for immediate action and ready to sacrifice everything, life itself, for it. That seems to be the kind of uh, organic environment wherein something like a tradition begins to take shape. Yep. So it's not that you go out, you set out to, 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 to establish uh, sort of a, uh, a way of life or the particular like, you know, uh, but instead it's, it's that you go out to seek truth. And as you seek truth, you realize the only way I can really seek truth is if I stop doing this and start doing this. And then you seek it a little yeah, more, and then you say, right. the only way that I can really seek truth is if I do it with this other guy who's trying to do this. But I right. see that he's doing this as well, right. so I'm going to try to like yeah. – like, and so it's this sort of process that's, that's, that's maybe by nature temporal. Yeah. And so it takes time yeah. to and, start discovering what it means to live this quest. Right, and, and, and this is it, – it might highlight that there's a uh, – Maybe an inconsistency in, in Alyosha that he doesn't quite fully realize, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. like all of us. I mean, maybe this is coming up in book two, like you said, that the knowing oneself or not lying to oneself is, right. is what's most important. That right. his 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 honest desire to seek the truth and to believe it and to serve it, I think, just is the philosophical stance. That just is what it means to be philosophical. Maybe uh, what it means to be human. And what it means to be human. Yeah. And, but yet at the same time, he has fallen into um, a particular preconception of what the truth would have to be like or what seeking it would have to be like. Um, I mean, he went to the monastery to, to seek it, which is to say that, that, that that's where it was going to be found. Right. And, of course, it can be found there. Uh, but I, I think maybe what's going on is that he is is placing parameters on what it would be to to be perfected, uh -huh. how you get perfected, uh, where you would find perfection, um, and and, and, he's, yeah. and he's sort of tying it to a particular worldview, um, which which. Um, but but here's the here's here's his salvation is that uh, at least I think we'll see as, as we go forward uh, is that he he ties it to a particular worldview but at the same time he recognizes that he needs to follow Zosima and Zosima who is like maybe in in some real sense just the explosion of worldviews yeah um, if he if he attaches himself to Zosima that 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 sort of youthful naivete is going to, I think, fall away. Yeah, yeah. Because Zosima, who who seems to be in some sense incarnate love, oh, yeah. is himself non uh ideologizable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he he's 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 beyond comprehension. He's beyond categorization. He's right. he's something more. So yeah. And, and and if and if he it, if he takes the elder tradition it, seriously, he really binds himself just, to him, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, so the bottom of twenty eight, 
you, you get to um, uh, Alyosha noticed that many, almost all, went into the elder for the first time with apprehension and uneasiness, but came out with bright and happy faces. Mm -hmm. Alyosha was particularly struck by the fact that Father Zosimo was not at all stern. On the contrary, he was almost gay. The monks used to say that he was more drawn to those who were more sinful, and the greater the sinner, the more he loved him. Uh, goes on to, to here's here's Jesus sitting in, in Matthew's house with prostitutes and yeah. tax collectors. Yeah, and and this is this is this is someone who uh, you kind of see as. Um, a crazy person going back to uh, Alyosha's mother, what we were talking about. The crazy last woman. Time. The crazy woman. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's I think it's partly um, his. I mean, he even says this. What what, what brought him to the um, twenty six in this chapter? What brought him to the monastery was perhaps uh, his memories of childhood of being brought here, to which his mother may have taken him to mass. Right. Um, this this. Uh, slanting sunlight, the holy image to which his poor crazy mother had held him up and acted upon his imagination. So, so I think I, I like the imagination reference because when you think about what an ideology is, is it sort of a, it's a way of imagining um, how things ought to be or should be or are. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think what you have with Alyosha is, Apparently, the very first experience that he remembers, which makes makes for the the, uh, the structure of his of all future imagination, is this experience, which is precisely crazy. It's this non ideological or categorizable right. experience, which is what opens him up to being able to yeah, see so, that in. So, in a in a true in a true realism, and maybe this is the contradiction within him that you're talking about. At a true realism. He is continually motivated, maybe unbeknownst to himself, by this image of reality that took place to him of his mother and of her offering right. him to the, um, the Blessed Mother. And that this, 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 is, this may be the bottom of his reason for coming here and not sort of a socialistic Christianity. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that probably makes even more sense with his, with his attachment to Zosima, right. who seems to be in some sense more than mere – socialistic christianity yeah yeah and and uh you will you'll it was even it's, it's referenced here that um not all the monks in the monastery uh liked the zosima yeah there was there was a, a most a lot of them did he said most of them did yeah but but there's 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 some at least one we're gonna meet this one later uh who certainly does not like zosima and the reason Oh, I, I can't say it, but <laughs> it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to do with a lot of this. Um, a lot of this introduction of this here. stuff, yeah. Good. Um, so uh, I, I'm of the opinion that one of the themes is introduced, of the, of the book is introduced in this chapter, that is the theme of whether or not Christianity is an ideology. Mm -hmm. um, is it something that you, that you should study? Start with before encountering the world and reality, or is it something that you um, you come to at the same time in encountering reality? Because in some yeah. ways it is reality, right. right? And 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 but but it's not it's not merely reality because faith is supernatural. So there has to be almost a coincidence, right? Of the experience of reality and the supernaturalization of the person to be able to see reality for what it is. It's not that reality itself causes me to be Christian mm -hmm. because that would make it, that would make faith natural. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and maybe this is sort of like the death of apologetics, but instead it seems to be a coincidence of the encounter with reality and the transformation of right. the human person in some supernatural way. Right. And people might be confused if people are still listening uh, by, <laughs> good. by that's a that's a good yeah, moniker there by um, uh, what an ideology is, and I think we have perfect examples in our political system. Like, oh, I'm a Democrat, and what that means is, oh, now I have to do X, Y, and Z. And we kind of already have a um, 
a pre uh, preconception as to what a Democrat is and right. what a Democrat does. Right. Or I'm a Republican, and therefore there's a preconception of what a Republican is and what a Republican does. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 so in some ways your your identity, your actions are predetermined mm-hmm. by this this broader structure that you you just sort of check a box and say, okay, I'm a this, and so you resign your freedom, you resign your your will over to this this preconceived notion, and therefore your plan of action is already determined for you by this prior right. thing. Um, Which is interesting. And, and the question is, is Christianity like that? Is Christianity the same right. like, I'm going to be a Christian, I'll check the box, and now all of my actions, here's what a Christian does, and now let me let me just do that. And I think what Dostoevsky is saying is, no, yeah. that's not what, Christianity is not an ideology like being a Republican. So let's 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 take this idea, which sounds very much like, although I think maybe the foundation is different, the elder tradition, right? Because yeah. what do you do? You assi- you you sign yourself over to not an ideology or preconception yeah. of an idea, but to a person, to a, to an individual, to a person, right? To a face. And and oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> and he says, um, this sounds like a really great uh, a really great. Um, uh, uh, tradition and it is a great tradition and it is a great way of becoming free right so it's it's not a type of giving your freedom over to an ideology it's actually a way of finding your own individual personal freedom and now individual maybe is a little too that's probably not the right word but um, personal freedom and and interestingly where is it ultimately found in it, he is going back to 27, which you read to escape the lot of those who have tried their whole lives, their whole life without finding their true selves in themselves. Right. So when you give yourself over to this other person, it's not in, in some sense. That's when you find yourself in yourself. Right. You, yeah. you actually yeah. find yourself. In, you were there. Yeah. Yeah. You were already there. Yeah. But the person who searches for it elsewhere isn't yeah. going to be able to find it. Yeah. And I think a lot of times what. When people subscribe to an ideology, what what they say is that individual over there, that is, that's basically like my that's my dream. That's that like I want to be like that person. And so you 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 take your identity and you place it in someone else, mm-hmm. and which I think is a way of of maybe renouncing. In some ways, your own self, but not to find yourself in, in your. I mean, this is if this sounds weird and paradoxical, then so does the gospel. So, <laughs> uh, exactly right, but but I, I think that's actually a way of a type of slavery to that other. Mm-hmm. That other one is not. That other individual is not um, leading you to freedom by helping you kind of have your own life of, of with with depth but it's someone who is um taking your your freedom away from you uh-huh. right and that person can be a, a um you know a political figure that person can be a, a a particular um you know popular figure what have you such that like all of your actions are done inspired by that individual mm-hmm. and and in some ways their their presence is dictating your life which is I think the exact opposite of what's going on with the elder tradition, even though it looks like that's exactly what's going on more mm-hmm. than anything, mm-hmm. but rather as you as you see with Zosima, he's this guy who's who's completely at the service of everyone that comes to him. Mm-hmm. So it's not like come to me and and I'll direct you. It's come to me so I can serve you, mm-hmm. uh, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 it's it's that is what leads to true freedom. And that comes at the the uh, bottom or middle of twenty eight that, that paragraph. Um, this tradition, um, I'll just read the sentence. It is true, perhaps, that this instrument, the the elder, uh, which had stood the test of a thousand years for the moral regeneration of a man from slavery to freedom, and to moral perfectibility, may be a two edged sword or two edged weapon. And it may lead some not to humility and complete self-control, but to the most satanic pride, that is, 
to bondage and not to freedom. So the, 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 the elder tradition can lead to the most unfree life mm -hmm. as well as the most free life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it, it, it's going to depend on whether or not one is approaching it ideologically and whether or not the elder is approaching it ideologically as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's whether or not you're going there thinking here is going to be my my perfection, um, and it has nothing. To, it's just oh, who's this guy? I don't know who this guy is, but this is this is what people say is like the freeing thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it because it's the freeing thing, and I'm not sure why it's the freeing thing, and I don't really feel drawn to this. And the same thing with the the elder. I think that's uh -huh. that's going to lead to. And maybe this is why this is why like everybody. He, he indicates there were a lot of people that were against the elder tradition just as a thing. Yeah, yeah. Probably because of that kind of thing, right? Right. You really have to have the, this is my new word, I guess, coincidence yeah. of, of the seeker of truth and the elder who seeks to, to serve and love, as you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So the, the submission to the elder, though, ultimately then seems like it's the spiritual director, but it's more, it's even more than that. It's like a superior, but even more than that. It's, it's, I mean, his story of the martyr, yeah, right. Who dies the martyr's <laughs> death and his coffin keeps leaving. Depart all ye unbaptized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and th there's this idea that, you know, um, it doesn't matter even if you, if, if, if like, this is how serious it is. Even if you die a martyr's death, it doesn't matter if you didn't obey one little thing that your elder told you. Yeah. Right. Which is, which is, um, and, and I think he's specifically saying, like, this This might be a little over the top, but this it, is how seriously people point, are yeah. taking it. Right? Yeah. Even if it even if it is just a fable, fables are there to, you know, demonstrate a point. Right, uh, right, right. And so this it, so it seems like – I don't know that it says that, that Alyosha has done this with Elder Zosima yet. No, I don't think he – I don't think he has. He has committed but, himself like that. But, but I think he, he – Kind of, um, um, he he's moving in that direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, it even says, I believe he can he can come and go when he wants, and he even says that he likes to to do that. He likes to to go, and he doesn't. He's not forced to wear the monastic habit, but he he likes to. Um, and the description of it's the why that is was interesting to me. I think it's on twenty nine. Um. Uh. And the, the, actually, it's somewhere else, I believe. But what, what's on 29 is, is similar, right in the middle. Whether they had really been healed, uh, he's referring to certain healings that Zosim had done that Alyosha fully believed. Whether they had really been um, healed or were simply better in the natural course of the disease was a question which did not exist for Alyosha. For he truly believed in the spiritual power of his teacher and rejoiced in his fame and his glory as though it were his own triumph. Um, his heart throbbed and he beamed, as it were, all over when the elder came out uh, to the gates of the hermitage into the waiting crowd of the pilgrim. I mean, the, the way he's described is this, this, like this child who is taking delight in his father being so awesome. Yeah. Like, my dad's the best dad. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and, and I, I think there was a fight between our kids about that recently, actually. Oh yeah, yeah. I I heard a story about <laughs> a, a discussion of whose dad was better. No, no. <laughs> that's hilarious. I'm not sure what the conclusion was, but no, no, no. <laughs> but but I but I, I think there's there's something interesting here that he he t it's almost almost a sort of it almost comes off as a as like a pride. He's a, he's taking he's taking pride in. Zosima's success, mm -hmm. uh, and that's partly because he's slowly starting to commit himself over to Zosima, and so he he sort of if you give your if you give your soul to Zosima, then his success is going to be your success because he has your soul. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's it's like in in marriage, right? Um, right. So I don't know, it, it, and and maybe it's maybe to actually enter into the elder tradition has to happen in this slow, uh, gradual way, such that you're not sure whether or not you fully committed yourself over 
Yeah, and, and uh, maybe it goes back to this idea of temporality and, and the fact that traditions by their nature are temporal. Entrance into a tradition is temporal too. Right. It has to be this, this, this slow movement towards it. Yeah. So I, I like this, 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 this line on page 30 at the very top uh, where he's talking about um, the Russian peasant. But it sounds very much like Alyosha, who, who at the beginning of, of the book was described as being uh, entering a monastery because he was a lover of humanity trying to flee the wickedness of the world, right? And Zosima seems to be sort of the answer to his life. Right, right. Uh, at the bottom of 29, Oh, he understood that for the humble soul of the Russian peasant, worn out by grief and toil, and still more by the everlasting injustice and everlasting sin, his own and the world's, it was the greatest need and comfort to find someone or something holy to fall down before and worship, which mm. seems like what Alyosha is doing. Right? Right. And then this quote, which um, I think it's, I don't remember who it, who it is quoting, who's quoting here, maybe the elder. Uh, Among us there is sin, injustice, and temptation, but yet somewhere on earth there is someone holy and exalted. He has the truth. He knows the truth. So it is not dead upon the earth. So it will come one day to us too. And rule over all the earth according to the promise. Uh, this this sort of seeking of the good in the midst of the wickedness of the world, which in some sense is is linked with Dostoevsky's obsession with modern atheism. Yeah, and, and the problem of, of belief in the midst of modern atheism. Yeah, seems to be in some way only overcome in the incarnation of one who lives that. Yeah, <clears throat> and what's great if you take Zosima to be that one. And it seems that Alyosha is. Yeah. Zosima himself is is the one who says, I completely agree, which is why I go and I bow down before the greatest sinner there is. Yeah. Right. So on the page right before at the top, right, the greater the sinner, the more he loved him. Yeah. Um, and I and I think uh, it's this question, where do you seek, where do you find the good? Um, where can the good be found? And um, it seems uh, uh, Alyosha is saying the good is found in the monastery. It's found in the elder tradition. Mm-hmm. And Zosima seems to be saying... Um, it's found in serving the sinner. It's found in serving the sinner. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's found and the greater the, the sinner, the, 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 the greater the good. Yeah. Which is, which is, which is amazingly paradoxical, right? Because what we, what we keep wanting is this thing that's beyond sin or that's above sin and the, and the, the good yeah. being this holy perfection and his understanding of holy perfection is serving sin. Sinfulness. Yeah, and, and it's almost as if for Zosima, if there weren't such great sinners, there wouldn't be such great lovers. Yeah, and therefore there wouldn't be like perfection. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, so I, I, yeah, that's... So if you're looking to... And then it goes on. If you're looking to establish the kingdom of Christ, what is that going to look like? Um, right, I, I think, like, what what does it mean to have the kingdom of God at hand? Um, it doesn't seem to be one that is um, rid of sinners, but one that is and, and so, so that you come up with the best conditions so that there aren't any sinners. Right. Right. I think that if, if, if that's <laughs> the point of the church is to say there aren't going to be sinners ever. Yeah. Um, uh, then I, I think we're, we're doing a very bad job yeah. of, of things. And I don't think um, that's the point of the church. I, I think, um, what was it that, that I've come, I know a lot of these things kind of, Vaguely, as if it's like, like a half-remembered thing. Um, I've come not to, not for the just, not for, for sinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And and so I, I think the kingdom is not the kingdom of God on 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 earth or at hand is not so that we can rid rid it of sinners, but so that sinners can come. And in their sin, love and renounce it. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, it's, I think this is this is an, this is going to be an ongoing ongoing yeah, theme. The I good, the good in the evil, and and sort of 
um, is it going to be the evil that overshadows the good, or is it the good that's going to mm-hmm. sort of take up take up the evil and transfigure it? Yeah, and and which 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 makes me think of this line of Jesus becoming sin, right? Yeah, because I think that that's in some sense at the heart of what the incarnation is about, and therefore what reality is yeah. all about in some way. But the interesting thing about all of this that we've been talking, right? Zosim is about what we're talking about right now, but taking up sin into oneself. Uh, uh, Zosima is there to love the sinner. The, the greater the sinner, the more he loves him. It seems that what, what we want to say is, uh, or, or what this sets up the stage for the arrival of his family, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is uh, a bunch of, uh, especially his dad, right? Yeah. Like just a mess, right? And, uh-huh, and his, uh-huh. and his, and his uh, uncle or cousin, um, Piotr Musov or whatever Musov. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are uh, they are like going to be like uh, like Zosim is going to love these guys. I mean, yeah. really love them. Yeah. yeah. But it's but it's interesting because the book ends this way, right? <coughs> Where <coughs> Alyosha gets a letter from his brother saying, "Don't worry, we're going to behave ourselves." <coughs> um, and then he writes. The very last, very last paragraph there, tiny paragraph. Nevertheless, I would rather bite out my own tongue than be lacking in respect to the sainted man whom you reverence so highly. He wrote in conclusion, Alyosha was not greatly cheered by this letter. So <clears throat> Alyosha's stressed, right? Because he's got his whole family here. I mean, I mean, we're all stressed when our family has to be brought out in front of everybody, and we, mm-hmm. <laughs> we know yeah. all their problems, yeah. and we think that, it, that that everybody's annoyed by them. So Ayosha is worried that when they come, they're going to embarrass him, or they're going to uh, embarrass the elder. Yeah, or uh-huh. or, or, or or be like um, disrespectful to the elder, uh, which we'll see happens. But yeah. we'll also see that they're like he's just worried that the elder's going to be like pissed at them, right. which means that he doesn't know Zosima yet, right? Yeah. Um, because if if it's true that. He loves more. The more the sinner, the more yeah. he loves them. Oh, then he's going to just... Like, Fyodor's like his best oh, then friend. Gonna, right? yeah. <laughs> Fyodor and him are going to be like, you know... Yeah. They're, they're going to want to go on road trips together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to have a great time. Um, but Ayosha doesn't yeah. see that, right? He's not yeah. cheered by this. He's stressed. And, and we see that in book two as, as, as we move into... As we'll be moving into yeah. that. That, yeah. that, 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 that. That he is not... Ready for this encounter to take place. Right. So, hmm. any last That's thoughts? Um, no, not, not not really. Um, yeah, this was a great, great. Uh, oh, one last thought. I'm, I won't comment. I just bring it to people's attention to think about. Um, bottom of page twenty-five. Though these young men unhappily fail to understand that the set that. The sacrifice of life is, in many cases, the easiest of all sacrifices, and that to sacrifice, for instance, five or six years of their seething youth to hard and tedious study, if only to multiply tenfold their powers of serving the truth and the cause they have set before them as their goal. Such a sacrifice is utterly beyond the strength of many of them. I can give my life, but, but I can't spend five years to, to better seek the truth. Yeah. Right. I'll give my life for the truth, of course. And he did say something like, "But I can't would... give five years of hard study to like better see it." Yeah, yeah. And 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 when is it? When is it? The five years of hard study need to happen in youth. In youth, right? right. 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 Otherwise, you live your whole. But life. but you all know this because you're spending your free time reading Dostoevsky. Reading Dostoevsky. <laughs> so, yeah. And he does. He does. He also says at one point in that maybe I didn't hear it in what you read. Uh, that, that they would be willing to give their life so long as it wasn't as painful and that it was quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that that's, a, that's also an interesting yeah. thing, right? It, and, and it does seem like less of a sacrifice. I mean, that, that highlights, I, mean, I said I was going to comment on it, but it, last, last point. It, I think that <laughs> highlights that even martyrdom is ideological for many people. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I would love to give my life under these contexts. Yeah. Or in this context, yeah. under, under these conditions. I'll... I'll sacrifice my life, but but if you're asking me to sacrifice my life by like studying and reading, you know, Russian literature and, right. and thinking really hard <laughs> right. about it, I, that's that's not sacrifice. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's too hard. Yeah, I'll give my life, but I won't. Yeah. I won't wake up early and read some Dostoevsky before I have to start my day. Yeah. 
Yeah, all good. Okay, so with that, we leave you. 